When it comes to finding global opportunities, a country that is highly underrated and not tried by many is Australia. Now I know it's a major economy and a major dominant force in the world, yet it is also one of the very few countries who kept their borders shut for so many years during the pandemic that many people lost interest in it. But the good news is that the borders have been reopening and many Australian states have been issuing invites. So if you want to move to Australia without any job or without any visa uncertainty and with a PR, this video is for you. So make sure you stick around. Hello and Namaste, my name is Nadina Nagori and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking everything about Australia. It's going to be a beginner info and we'll be talking about multiple visa streams in different parts of Australia that you could be using to your advantage. Let's talk about what really happened in Australia. So during the pandemic, Australia had shut its borders. In fact, if you were following the news, you would realize that even for international students living in Australia, things had started to become very difficult. But post pandemic, in the middle of 2022, the country realized that it does not have the labor force it needs for its growth and development. And that's when suddenly multiple pathways were either created or multiple pathways were reopened so that the foreign workers could come in and build the economy up. If you follow Australian immigration closely, you realize that their immigration pathways can be a little complicated. And that's why I only recommend two pathways to you, the subclass 190 and the subclass 491. Also note that Australia loves calling all its pathways visas, they're not visas. These are basically permanent residencies, which is equivalent to getting all the rights of a citizen except voting rights. Offshore means for people living outside of Australia and onshore means for people living in Australia. There are some basic requirements that everyone has to follow, which have been set by by the Australian Home Affairs. You must be below 45 years of age. You must have at least three years of work experience. You must have a certain score in English. I would always recommend proficient and we'll talk about that later. And you must be in one of the shortage occupation lists. When it comes to the shortage occupation list, Australia overall has a list in itself. But there is also a state-wise list because every state is also issuing its own invites. And in today's video, we're focusing on the state-wise uh, invites. And I'm going to pick up a couple of professions to take you through because it's just going to make the video very simple to understand. I'm sure at this point, you're already asking me, Nidhi, what if I'm not one of the professions on the shortage occupation list? Well, my first recommendation is going to be that you do try to qualify for one of the professions. If you don't have the education and experience in it, I highly recommend getting that because the shortage list in Australia mimics the shortage list in the world. So whatever is in shortage in Australia is actually also in shortage in other countries. So when you open yourself up to the shortage list in Australia, you also open yourself up to occupations which are in heavy demand all over the world, which would increase your chances. So the states that have been currently issuing invites for 491 and 190 visas are Tasmania, Queensland, Northern Territory, Western Australia, NSW, Australian Capital Territory and Southern Australia. For the purposes of this video, we'll be picking up two codes, one for a civil engineer and one for architect because we've already spoken about them. And I'll be going with the code 3121 for architects and 2332 for civil engineers. Now let's break down the requirement of each of the states we're discussing. So while every state has to follow the rules that have been laid out by Home Affairs Australia, states also have the flexibility of coming up with their own rules. So many states have tweaked a few things here and there, many states have not. Let's talk about them individually. The first thing I want you to note is that if you want to apply for Australia PR, in general, the home affairs requirement is that you must have 65 points or more. A lot of people assume that this is like Canada PR, meaning there'll be a cutoff, so there'll be a draw, and then anybody above a particular point or anybody above a particular score can get an invite. But that's actually not how Australia runs. There is no cutoff. At least there's no cutoff that is publicly put out, so we don't really know how the these uh, choices are being made and how people are being invited. But from our experience and from what we've noticed, about 80 is a good score. So 80, 85, 90, that's what you should be aiming for. You should also have a positive skills assessment. And just like Canada, I highly recommend that you get a good IELTS score. Now, Australia also segregates it into having like a regular English score and also a proficient English exam. So they have a whole definition of what they call proficient. But in general, when it comes to just IELTS, because that's an exam that I've given, it means that you must have a minimum of seven in all four components. So it means that you must be willing to work hard. The first day that I will pick for today's discussion is Tasmania. I don't see a lot of special requirements here. And when I go and look for civil engineer and architect, the two codes that I've mentioned, it is available on the shortage occupation list. Keep in mind that what really determines your 491 and 190 is your profession being on the shortage occupation list. 
So before checking anything else, please make sure that you check that you're eligible to be on the shortage occupation list. Now let's come on to Queensland. Queensland does have its own set of requirements, meaning while Home Affairs asks for 65 points, Queensland is asking you to have 80 points. In certain fields, it also demands more than five years of work experience, so not three, but five. So the one that I've chosen, civil engineer, it does require more than five years of work experience. It also needs proficient English, but in general, that's going to be my recommendation. Please go and get proficient English overall so that you're not worried and you're not scrambling for points. Now let's come to the next state that I have on my list, Northern Territory. Nothing special here except that they need 10 years of work experience, which honestly might be a lot, but I always get a question around, hey Nidhi, I have a lot of experience or I'm slightly older, do I still have a chance? So you could be looking at Northern Territory because their requirements are that they need slightly senior people. The next state that I'm targeting is Western Australia. What I like here is that they have almost 4,000 or more spots available. They have a shortage list that has more than 300 occupations. There is no cost whatsoever. So they mention it on the website itself that it is at no cost and they need minimum 80 points for you to put an application in. Now let's come to NSW, New South Wales, which houses the beautiful city of Sydney, which is where most of us want to move. So NSW has a lot of pathways in it. The pathway that I'm going to recommend just for the 491 and 190 is going to be the Streams B list. This is again the shortage occupation list. You want to make sure that your occupation is on the Streams B list for NSW. I went and did a check. Of course, civil engineer and architects are already there. No other special requirements. The other pathways don't really work for people who are offshore or even if they work, their requirements are completely crazy. Like you have to be endorsed by a huge body in New South Wales or the government, etc. In my opinion, while that might work for some people who are extraordinarily bright or have a lot of accomplishments, that's not something that would work for everyday people or maybe even me. So you can go ahead and read the rules and see what else applies to you. But in my opinion, Stream B for NSW would be good for you. The next state that I would recommend is South Australia. Again, I've checked. Civil engineer and architects are on the list as always and no special requirement. The next and the last state on my list is Australian Capital Territory. Again, just like Southern Australia, no special requirements. Civil engineer and architects are still on the list. The one state that was actually open until a couple of weeks ago and is not accepting applications anymore is Victoria, which houses Melbourne. I know that's gonna make a lot of people sad, but as of now, I don't see that they have been accepting applications. So let's see, maybe they'll reopen in a couple of weeks, in a couple of months. We'll hold on to that. And whenever they choose to open up or reopen again, another video will pop up on this same channel so make sure you're subscribed. As this video is nearing towards its end, I do want to highlight a couple of things. One, obviously choose a profession that's going to be in demand worldwide, something like a civil engineer and architect, something that's easier to do, and that will obviously give you better exposure worldwide. I also did a quick salary search for civil engineers and architects, and I'm gonna put up a screenshot of the salary range that I found for these people in Canada. So clearly a field that has good demand, not just in Australia, but also in other parts of the world. If you're only considering Australia, I highly recommend that you look up Home Affairs website. Also look up specific states and understand what their requirements are. If you have any specific questions or if you want me to cover any state in detail or if you want me to make another video answering your questions around Australia, please drop them all in the comments below and I'll be happy to take it up. On that note, this video has come to an end. I hope you will be giving a chance to Australia. At least go ahead, check what's out there, make an informed decision. If you have any thoughts, suggestions, comments, please leave them down. Any questions are also welcome. Any, any idea on the next videos are also welcome. I promise to see you in the next video. Until then, you make sure you take care of yourself. Stay safe. Namaste.